Uh, and so as you can see from the title, uh, my project was on computational modeling of uh, a, poten a plausibly potential uh, Kateyev quantum spin liquid superconductor known as alpha ruthenium chloride. And there should be a uh, three on the end here, but that's not important. Uh, so the introduction. So obviously superconductors have a large variety of uses in uh, many fields. Uh, in particular, uh, computa uh, computers could benefit uh, from lowered resistances. Uh, and energy transportation and storage of all kinds would benefit greatly from uh, stable superconductors. Uh, but one thing that has continually uh, troubled the development is that uh, all existing superconductors require the use of very exotic transition metals, uh, complex alloy structures, or uh, extremely cold cryogenic conditions, which are obviously very impractical for everyday use. A, a relatively new type of superconductor that has the possibility to overcome a number of these issues is known as a Kateyev quantum spin liquid. Uh, just to continue. So a Kateyev quantum spin liquid is a phase of matter that is theorized to exist in two-dimensional uh, magnetic structures. And it's particularly pronounced uh, in those that have a hexagonal or honeycomb crystal structure similar to what you would see with graphene. Uh, alpha ruthenium chloride is of particular interest in this in that it strongly uh, exhibits many traits that are found that were thought to be indicative of this type of uh, phase of matter, and it is relatively trivial to produce. It also uh, individually exhibits many unusual properties that have uh, yet to be fully explained uh, in published literature. Yeah, another model. So uh, from the top left uh, to the top right, we have uh, just a basic uh, repeated unit cell showing the uh, roughly hexagonal uh, nature of the alpha ruthenium chloride. Uh, next to that is a, a spin density diagram, which shows that uh, we do indeed see that our uh, free spins are concentrated on our ruthenium atoms and are with our total charge being evenly distributed across the uh, unit cell. And we have our density of states for two different uh, spin conformations. Left is the antiferromagnetic, where we have uh, all paired spins, one up, one down. And the right is the ferromagnetic unpaired spins, where we have two up. Uh, it's not in entirely obvious from looking at that, but it is uh, found that the antiferromagnetic is the more stable of the two with a slightly lower uh, total energy. And so uh, the models that we worked with, or I worked with, were computed using uh, a collinear spin polarized uh, DFT, which differs from original uh, Condorcet equations by using a series of poly matrices, matrices to find the densities, which are shown in the lower left. Uh, an important point of the collinear nature is that it only takes the real portions of uh, the spin density and ignores off diagonal interactions shown with the blue circles uh, as the real portions. And what this does is it allows us to find uh, electron densities uh, in terms of X, Y, and Z when they are otherwise identical. And this differs from uh, the original one, as I said, is that it's a uh, summation of matrices rather than just a total summation of the absolute value of uh, the pi uh, rho i r squared. There we go, methods. Uh, so alpha ruthenium chloride is a two-dimensional material by nature. Uh, it is a similar in structure in bulk form to graphite or uh, you know, graphite, a van der Waals force layered material with thin single atom thick layers. And as such, it can be well estimated by the Ising model of a magnet, 
which uses the following Hamiltonian equation. Uh, the particular uh, component of importance is the uh, J sub IJ, which is uh, accounts for the interaction between neighboring spins and is a uh, material constant. And all, all of the following calculations and geometries were calculated using VASP software. So several calculations were run to find the energy of the unit cell at several temperatures and uh, test to see if there was any change in magnetization. The temperatures chosen were 300 Kelvin, 200 Kelvin, 100 Kelvin, 77 Kelvin, 8 Kelvin, and 4 Kelvin. Uh, the reason for those choices is uh, they are well-defined points for uh, room temperature, uh, the uh, temperature of dry ice, solid carbon dioxide, uh, the transition between what is considered uh, high temperature and cryogenic temperatures at 100 Kelvin, uh, 77 Kelvin for the uh, boiling point of liquid nitrogen, 8 Kelvin is a point that's in material a particular interest to ruthenium chloride due to uh, some unusual behavior that it demonstrates there at for its heat capacity, and for Kelvin is uh, liquid helium. Yeah, and as I said earlier, calculations were done for both the ferromagnetic and anti-ferromagnetic uh, spin conformations. Uh, so from this, uh, since we are only considering the uh, collinear directly in or out of uh, the magnetic field, we can take our energies as being plus or minus uh, mu h, with h being the external magnetic field, and we can calculate our magnetic moment as uh, n tan h of our energy over uh, Boltzmann constant temperature, which would be equal to our internal energy over the strength of the magnetic field. Uh, from determining that, we can also find our specific heat uh, from the first law of thermodynamics results. So the VASP calculations showed no change in magnetization with change in temperature and a uh, overall decrease in unit energy uh, with decreasing temperature. The uh, bump that you will see on the graph on the right here is uh, the temp calculation for liquid nitrogen. And uh, from this, we found that the value we were getting for J was 0.6 electron volts, which I will discuss further later. So performing the calculations described earlier gave us the graph on the left for our specific heat versus temperature. And on the right, we have a uh, published uh, graph showing a comparison of existing uh, computational models of ethylene chloride and experimentally collected data of its heat capacity. And as I said at the bottom. So one thing that we noticed from this is that these are rather highly improbable results. We are not really very close at all uh, to seeing uh, a good match with existing data. And there are a few theories that I have as to why, and which I will get to in the next slide. Uh, it is likely that the small size of the unit cell, since we are only working with uh, two ruthenium atoms uh, to uh, speed the calculations along, likely caused an overestimation of the interaction uh, constant between the spins, and that this is uh, throwing off everything. Uh, other work that was performed using a less uh, computationally rigorous method gave much more reasonable uh, figures when using much smaller values for J. And uh, future work on this would be to uh, redo calculations and correct for this overestimation to hopefully get a better fit for data. Uh, okay, questions? please join me in thanking Stephen. Uh,